here with Lucid Imagination. I'd like to welcome you to analyze this, our webinar. So today we're going to be talking about analysis in Lucene and Solar. The basics, some tips and some tools for dealing with it. What we'll be covering today is what is analysis and why do you care? Some common problems that can occur with analysis and some of the best tools for troubleshooting analysis problems, the analyzer tool, the schema browser, and loop. We're also going to go over some existing analyzers, filters, and tokenizers and look at some sample problems. So, what is analysis? Analysis is what Solar does to convert your text into a series of terms. Solar does not search text, a common misconception. Solar searches the set of terms that it creates by analyzing your text. This can cause problems if the terms that it's producing are not the terms that you expect. Let's take a couple of examples here. We've got the first one, don't going to don't. That's demonstrating case folding, so the D is going to lowercase, and punctuation removal. The second one demonstrates a couple of things. It demonstrates that you can split on case. You can take one token and produce multiple tokens. And also, a very interesting characteristic of Solar is you can actually have two tokens at one position in your, in your index. So phone and iPhone there actually ac occupy the same location. That means either one can be matched at that point in a phrase query. The third example demonstrates that Solar out of the box handles a whole bunch of languages. This is the Greek analyzer. You can see that the first word gets removed, that's stop word removal, and you can also see that it's removed accents from several of the terms. Now, of course, I don't speak any Greek. That's Google Translate. It says the first example. But the point is that you don't actually have to know the language that you're indexing to actually make a, a good approach at it. All right, the fourth one demonstrates something very straightforward. It just, it takes this phrase, the quick brown fox jumps, and translates it into, into the quick brown fox jumps. Um, in other words, it's doing no processing there. So that's a very common case when you're doing faceting or you're doing sorting, and you want to take the entire block of text as a unit. You don't generally do that for searching. So there are all sorts of different effects of analysis. There are many ways you can analyze a section of text. You can break it apart on white space. You can split on punctuation, case changes, numbers embedded in product numbers. You can also do stemming. Stemming is reducing words to their roots so you can match. If your user types in shoes, they can find a record that has shoe in it. You can also remove and replace unwanted words and symbols. For example, you can remove accent marks from words or regularized spelling. For example, you know, in German you have OE and O umlaut being equivalent. You might want to regularize that. You can also use it to combine words to form what are called engrams or shingles. And we'll talk about that a little bit later and why you might want to do that. You can also use it to add new words to a stream if you want to introduce synonyms to your stream. And, uh, and many more things. All right. Um, let's see. Just one moment. We're having audio difficulties. No idea. So, all right. Another point about analysis is frequently you want things analyzed more than one way. You might want to store an unanalyzed version of a field for searching, and store. So, sorry, you want might to store an analyzed version. That's an error on the slide of the field for searching, and you might want to store an unanalyzed version for fasting. I'm sorry, I've got those the unreversed on those two. You might also uh, want to store a stemmed and non-stemmed version of the field to get more precise matches. You know, for example, if you want to search, if the user types run rather than running, in some cases that's their equivalent, in other cases they are different terms. So if they give the precise exact form that's in the field, you give it a slightly higher boost, but you still match the other ones. All right, with copy fields, with copy fields, it's also fairly common to copy to a uh, common destination field. So you might copy all of your text fields to one field and make that your default search field. One important point that confuses people occasionally is when it says copy field, it's actually copying 
the field is using the same source as the 